What's up, YouTube? This is Detroit Borg. The look at the speed and performance of my new 2011 iMac. This is the mid 2011 iMac with the Sandy Bridge Core i7 processor running at 3.4 gigahertz. I also have 16 gigs of RAM along with the 2 gigabyte GPU from AMD. I believe it's the 6970M. And we also have, more importantly, the SSD upgrade. Now, the SSD is where things get really fun. And to best illustrate that, what I'm going to do now is launch a bunch of apps far more than any normal person would. Uh, just to give you an idea of how extreme the SSD performance is. So first up, let's just pick some apps. We're not going to pick everything, and we're going to launch them all at the same time. Now, as you can see, everything loads very quickly. The only thing really holding it up is my internet access. Of course, things need to download. And some apps, like my Aperture library, or my iTunes library, or my iMovie and uh, Final Cut library, are actually held onto the HDD, uh, the hard disk drive. So again, this computer has these two terabyte HDD, and that's where I keep all the libraries because the SSD isn't big enough. So even though you may have an SSD, it certainly is great for loading apps. It may not be great if you have to keep your libraries off that drive. So really the performance benefits is in the system and the speed of the applications. Now loading individual apps is just as fast. So for example, we're loading Photoshop here, Xcode, VLC, uh, word processors, everything loads very quickly. Again, so there's no lag time. There's no waiting for these things to be ready. So again, it speeds up productivity. It's very useful. But again, if you're loading an app that requires a library located on another disk drive, it's going to be slower. Now, if we attempt the same stress test on my previous generation iMac, this is the 2010 iMac with the quad core i7 running at 2.8 gigahertz. Uh, if we do the same test, uh, all you see is a bunch of bouncing icons, and again, that's because everything is loaded on the hard disk drive. So things boot up much more slowly. Now, in another area where an SSD will well outclass an HDD is in boot speed time. So on the left, we have our new iMac. On the right, we have our old iMac. Everything on the left is loading from an SSD. Everything on the right is loading from an HDD. So, of course, everything should be fairly accurate here because both computers are clones of each other, the operating system and the programs loaded. So this should give you a good idea of the comparison. On a reboot test, we see very similar results here. The iMac on the left shuts down and restarts a lot more quickly than the iMac on the right. Now let's throw some real world tasks at these computers to see how they compare. In this case, we're importing the exact same movie clip into iMovie. The computer on the right is the new one. The computer on the left is the old one. The new computer completes the task in about 40 seconds while the old computer takes a little longer, adding 13 seconds to that overall time. So you can see the performance games are somewhat minor, but they do add up in larger jobs. So this can definitely be useful if you're a power user making larger movies. But overall, from day-to-day -day use, you won't see huge gains here. Now, uh, the SSD certainly sees dr dramatic performance gains in other areas, but in areas like this, um, this is really processor dependent. So the processor uh, leaps here aren't as dramatic as uh, the performance gains you see with an SSD. Now let's run through some benchmarks. First up, we're going to do Xbench, which will give me a very detailed breakdown of my system performance. Overall, I scored 409, but more interestingly, uh, we get to take a look at my SSD performance, and we're running at about 200 megabytes per second. Much faster than the hard disk drive on the old iMac, which was running at only 25 megabytes per second. Next up is Geekbench, which will give me a better overall look at my system performance. In this test, I scored 11,800, which is a big improvement from the 9,181 I scored on the old iMac. Now, in our final benchmark, we'll use Cinebench, which will tell us more about the gaming performance of this iMac. Now, this iMac has the 
AMD 6970M processor with 2 gigs of dedicated RAM. And if we look at the OpenGL score, we, we get about 42 frames per second, and the CPU scores 6.81 points. Now, if we compare this to the older iMac, the OpenGL score gives us only 33.25 frames per second with a little over 5 points on the CPU. So indeed we see a very significant uh, boost in performance between the two computers. Alright guys, so that's a brief look at the performance of this iMac. I'll have more posted in the description below, so take a look there for some interesting links to uh, benchmarks and statistics. Once again guys, this is Detroit Borg. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.